What up nomads? Summer is here, and for some of you, your annual heat wave has started earlier than usual and with more fiery passion than ever. Or maybe you live in a more temperate place, but you're planning a trip to a hot one and looking for tips to pack. Could be the dry heat of a desert climate or the tropical humid heat that's also common around the world. Regardless of what kind of heat awaits you, I've got tips as a person who easily overheats myself. Let's go. If you're new to this channel, I wanna introduce you to my four main pillars for packing decision-making. Weather, activities, vibe, and trip length. If you have a rainy day, I recommend binging a few of my videos to get more tips on how these four lenses impact the way I pack for a business trip, for the fall, for the winter, for rainy weather, and much more. Obviously for weather, we're talking high temperatures, but there's some variety within rain, sun, high humidity, no humidity. If you're visiting hot and dry places, you're luckier because I don't feel like you need to be as careful with your packing list. Yes, it's going to be hot and sunstroke is real, but you can avoid feeling severely damp and sweaty if you just kind of take it easy. One caveat is that desert climates can have dust storms as well as cool off at night. So do keep that in mind with your travel research and planning. In humid weather though, my experience is that a 10 minute walk feels like you just did a 100 meter dash in a sauna. So I'm a bit more careful with what I pack so I don't feel and look like a walking puddle. Now I'm going to tackle activities and vibe together because my take here is that they have a similar impact on the packing list. Are you traveling to a really expensive resort with a dress code? but that also has air conditioning in most places, then you'll be able to dress up, wear a linen blazer, cute high heel sandals, and anything else that you feel like. Are you backpacking through Thailand? That's a different story. That's super sporty, both in vibe and most likely activities. Spending most of your time on the beach or going on a business trip, these are different activities and different vibes. Now my last pillar is trip length, but for this one, I'm going to angle it a bit differently. And that's by replacing the trip length with access to a washer and dryer. Summer is sweaty, dirty, fun, carefree. So usually my clothes just get more dirty than in the winter. For that reason, the amount that I pack is directly impacted by my ability to clean my clothes on the go and to start fresh throughout the trip. Just remember that if you are carrying dirty clothes with you along your trip, to pack a separate wash bag that you can use to keep your dirty and clean clothes separate in your suitcase. As you think about your packing list, my first piece of advice is to focus on fabrics. Typically, natural fibers like cotton, hemp, linen, silk, and merino wool are much better suited to keeping you super comfortable in hot weather. But there are some exceptions like athletic wear. Usually these are made from synthetic fibers, which can also be helpful for moisture wicking and managing humid weather. Why are linen and hemp so great? It has to do with how breezy they are and also how they absorb and release moisture. Meaning linen will absorb the sweat off of you and then dry really quickly, quicker than cotton, and hemp does this even better than linen does. Athletic fabrics can do the same, but my pet peeve with synthetics is they kind of stink after a while, even after washing over time, as well as being just less eco-friendly in a lot of ways. However, I know that you can buy recycled polyester fabrics now at more stores. So what about merino wool? Why would I possibly suggest wool in the summer? Well, thin merino has great temperature regulating properties, meaning it helps your body adapt to the heat. It also has similar moisture wicking properties and on top it's antimicrobial and doesn't get stinky. But for really hot weather, it might not be as breezy as a linen shirt, for example. Now the property of being able to absorb and release water is particularly great, not just for your own sweat, but if you get caught in a quick summer rain shower or if the humidity in the air is particularly high. Now let's talk about silk because it's a bit disputed. 
I like silk over polyester any day because pure polyester feels like plastic to me and if it's too tight or too constricting, it can get really hot. Silk is temperature regulating and breathable, but the thing with silk is that it can also show sweat pretty easily on your clothes. So that's something to consider if you are a sweaty person and you're going to something more fancy, you're gonna wanna have something that maybe doesn't show quite as much that you are overheating. So that's always something that I consider when I'm dressing for hot weather and also wanna look good. So even though black is not the most summery color and white is more reflective, Black can hide sweat if you're concerned about that. It can also be better for preventing discoloration than white. So white, you can often get deodorant marks, yellow marks, sunscreen discoloration over time, or fake tanner that has sweat off of your skin onto your fabric. Pale people know what I mean. So what do I pack on a typical hot weather trip? I start with a lot of loose linen both tops and bottoms. And there are plenty of cute matching sets on the market right now and affordable separates that you can mix and match if you wanna go super casual as well as a little bit dressier. I like long sleeve because I'm super pale and I do like the extra sun protection. And I often just wear it over top of a bathing suit or um, a crop top. Some more athletic clothes like skorts, bodysuits, tennis dresses can also be great. And I do like those for when I'm out and about. And bathing suits can also substitute as a bodysuit or a bra top, depending on the fabric. You can also choose open knit clothes or gauzy tops for added airflow. Now let's talk underwear because that's a huge factor in staying cool and comfortable in the summer. I will always recommend cotton or merino wool underwear over anything lacy or polyester, especially in the heat. And I like longer shorts if I'm wearing a skirt or a dress, because if you have thicker thighs, you don't want them to rub together. And also if I'm hopping on a bike or if it's extra windy, I like the extra coverage. I'll leave a link below to my favorite brands for underwear, as well as longer boy shorts to wear under your dresses and skirts. As for bras, Swap out those thick padded polyester bras for mesh bralettes, cotton bralettes, or go braless altogether if you can. I've also read that wearing thin cotton slips in the summer under a dress can help keep sweat under control, and it allows for a bit of space between fabric so nothing is visibly clinging to you, and it also catches sweat so it doesn't transfer onto your dress. This is great if you want to rewear your dress a couple of times without washing it, and you can just swap out the slip underneath. If you are concerned about your thighs rubbing together, you can also choose more skorts than skirts and rompers or combinations that have kind of shorts built into the look. Now footwear. If you have sweaty feet, I recommend shoes that have lots of airflow or staying comfortable with merino socks and regular shoes. I don't recommend flats that trap your feet, especially not synthetic ones. Leather ones are breathable and you can also get ones that have air holes for more airflow. Also, wear a hat in hot sunny weather because heat stroke, heat exhaustion, and sunburns can be serious risks to your health. I also recommend packing bandanas in the summer because they make for a quick and easy head covering, a face covering for a dust storm, and bandanas can also be used to catch sweat from your forehead and your neck. And you can also use them to continue wiping sweat away from you throughout the day. Or you can run a bandana under cold water and wrap it around your neck to cool you off really quickly. Do make sure you pack a bag that can carry all of these summer accessories with you. There are other things that you can pack too, like foldable fans, portable battery operated fans, water misters, and cooling neckties, which are filled with beads that absorb water and that you can wrap around your neck. Soak them in really cold water and they stay cooler longer than just a regular cotton bandana tie. Now, what cosmetics should you pack for hot weather? Well, sunscreen, of course but you also might want to invest in something a little bit more heavy duty for your deodorant or antiperspirant. My favorite is a mineral spray because one, it's aluminum free, but it also works really well. And if you get it in a spray format, you can spray it not only on your pits, but also on your feet, on your back, on your hands, if you have particularly sweaty areas. You might wanna change up your makeup routine too and focus more on skincare and waterproof mascara, cream blushes and bronzer so you're not mixing powder ingredients with your sweat. In general, just be prepared to shower more than usual 
And I personally like having wet hair and letting it air dry in really hot weather because the wet hair cools me down for just a little bit longer. I also like having wipes with me if my pits do start to smell or I need a bit of a refresh throughout the day. Do also plan for chub rub if you have bigger thighs. There are creams and powders you can buy to help prevent it or treat it after it occurs. Mega Babe has a ton of products for sweaty people, so I do recommend checking their line of products out. At the risk of sounding lame, don't sweat it. Summer is just one of those seasons where people are just going to be hotter and going to be sweatier. And I think it's just a general thing that we accept in each other. So have fun, enjoy the summer, and leave any tips that I've missed below on how you survive a hot, sweaty summer. Happy travels. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video until the end. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the capsule suitcase and turn on notifications so you get all the fresh content as soon as it comes out. Thanks for supporting this channel. Happy travels.